Father, we give you praise this morning. Yahweh, oh, you are our Yahweh, God. Jesus, come and do, come and do what only you what can only do. You can do Lord Jesus. Mighty man of war. Mighty man of war. Of Judah, You're the lion of Judah. We bow down oh, Lord. And we worship you this morning for who you are, oh, Father. Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. beginning and the end how awesome are your ways we worship you this morning we lift our voice and we say thank you for who you are lord in the glorious name of jesus hallelujah good morning to you and welcome to behold your god my name is pastor joy and today monday the 4th of july wow we are giving god praise for the awesome things he is doing in our lives 
we thank him every day he gives us a brand new day you know these are a miracle they are ordinances the lord has placed on earth ever since the lord placed the ordinances of day and night they have never failed and you know what every day is a gift the bible says this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it so rejoice in today be glad in it whatever you are hearing out from i want you to rejoice in today today is the day the lord has made and every day is a gift that is why it's called present is a present the lord gave to us and what we do with it matters you know the devil actually works to make sure that the presents that the lord gives us are a waste they see people wasting their days their life with things that are meaningless no value and god really expects us to use the day as he knows we are going to give account of the time we are giving on earth to live so we want to appreciate god for the life he has given to us we appreciate him for the good things that of life that comes with each day in the name of jesus hallelujah we are looking at topic beholding our god as he really is wow beholding our god as he really is by the grace of god we'll be looking at the intricacies they are so sensitive it's all found in the scriptures that showed us what god really is like what is our god like we'll be looking at this and i'm trusting god as he takes us into these details of who god really is it will change our perspective both about god the devil and life i tell you praise the name of jesus we want to start by reading the scriptures in the book of john chapter 17 verse 25 it says oh righteous father that was jesus praying to the father that was the last recorded open prayer he prayed with the disciples before his crucifixion look at what he said oh righteous father the world has not known thee wow but i have known thee wow and these have known that thou hast sent me what a discovery jesus was praying if you look at the entire prayer he prayed in this chapter 17 of john they were all loaded with revelations of who jesus is of who god is of his love and his, his intention for us and this particular verse 25 we are seeing that he was talking to the father there was a discussion between them two and it was also a prayer he was calling him father he said oh righteous father and we have established the fact that jesus is god but because of the restoration the redemption planned from the foundation of the earth for the fallen state of man he chose to come down and be a man and emptied himself he acknowledged him he called him my father oh my god when he rose from the dead he said go and tell my disciples he said your god and my god wow what a state we will understand it better by and by how he that was god from the everlasting from internal he has been god found in the form of man now look at his prayer oh righteous father it humbles me every time i read i say lord help me help us living with the mentality that needs to be upgraded you know that's what we do the bible says that we should not be conformed to the world but we should be what transformed by the renewing of our mind that is an upgrade it goes on every single day of our life we learn what the word of god says and it keeps getting our understanding making us better as we understand more say do not be conformed to this world but be transformed and that is why the christians that are conforming to the world doesn't really know what belongs to them in christ now he said oh righteous father the world has not known thee the world the system of the world, the people of the world, even the people of God. 
we grew in his knowledge. He said, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. He said he came from above. He was speaking to Nicodemus. He said, if I'm telling you of earthly things and you couldn't understand it, how much more if I begin to tell you about heavenly things? He is the one that he came. He said, nobody has ever sent the father. The only begotten of the father has expressed him, has made him known. And that is the Lord Jesus. He said, I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. The disciples have known that the father sent the Lord Jesus. He said, these have known that you have sent me. Something about what Jesus knew about God is what made him to do all he did. It's the knowledge of who God is that opens to us and makes us to really understand how to handle this God. So we are going to look at throughout this week who this God is. There are dimensions of his operations we see from the scriptures we are going to look at throughout the week. And trusting God to give us these revelations of him, it is when we know who God is. I believe the day that Peter, James, and John saw Jesus transfigured in that mount of transfiguration, their life never remained the same again. They saw him from another perspective. Ah, I tell you, when the revelation of God is given to us, we behold him as he really is our life can never remain the same again. And I want to let you know very clearly, the devil doesn't want us to grow in this knowledge of God. He wants as much as possible to keep us in our limited mind. He wants as much as possible for us to remain at a stage where we cannot really express this knowledge. We are going to get it. We are going to express it. We are going to live our life according to the knowledge of God that we have found out. And that is why he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not knowledge of who they are and knowledge of who God is. I believe it was a knowledge that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew about God that made them to do exploits in the name of the Lord. Beholding God as he is, understanding who he really is, I tell you, it makes a whole lot of difference. So can we start? We're going to look at Exodus chapter 9. We are reading from verse 13 all the way down to 21, 22. And we trust the Lord to carry us through. Now it says, from verse 13, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time, Send all my plagues. That was God speaking to a man. I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now, I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Wow. Verse 16 says, and in every and in very deed for this curse have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Wow. Verse 17 says, as yet exalted thou thyself against my people that thou shalt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, such as has not been in the Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore, I want you to note this verse 19. He said, send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they shall die. The Bible says, verse 20, He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. I want to stop there. And then we're going to look at this God who he really is. Now we see God. Who planned this? 
He called the children of Israel his own people that he called out from all the nations of the earth. He found the man because all men have gone astray. Nobody was seeking God. He found one man whose heart was searching for him. He revealed himself to him. That is Abraham. He said, leave your people. Come out from a place. You know, if you look at all that God did in the life of Abraham, you wonder. He left the man to come to the point where he can't produce anything. And God said, that is when I want to start with you. At the age of 100, he had a son. And the Lord began to give me a revelation of this son. He he said that you know very surely that your descendants shall be strangers in a strange land and they will oppress them for 400 years. God had it all planned out. He said, after which I will bring them out. And that was at the point when this thing was happening. And there is something very remarkable the Lord said. He said, for this cause I raised thee up. He was speaking to Pharaoh. Now, in all of this, we are looking at who this God really is. Here he was making demand for the people to go, yet he said that this Pharaoh will harden his heart. And he said, I know you will harden your heart. You will stiff, you'll be stiff-necked in what I gave you to do. But I want to let you know something, that I am the God of all the earth. And that my name will be known. Throughout all the earth. Now look at what he said, verse 19. After he has pronounced the plagues that are coming, he said something here. He said, now, therefore, send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. Thank you, Lord. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come upon them, and they shall die. Here is God releasing judgment upon a land. Yet you see his tenderness. Yet you see his mercy upon the people who are due to be judged. They have afflicted his people for all these years. And God is releasing judgment. He will tell them this is what is about to happen for the ten plagues that happened in Egypt. Every one happened before he ever said it. And every one of them he was telling them, do this. If you don't do this, this will happen. And we see him sending the kind of thing God will say he will send the locals you know he will send the the flies oh my god he will send the, the, the all of those caterpillars and here he was sending he said the hell and fire upon all the land of Israel and it was a judgment and here is God telling them advising them this thing is coming Yes, I am judging you, but I don't want you to be destroyed. And this is in, in line with the nature of our heavenly father. He said, I do not want anyone to perish. I don't want to, I don't want to destroy your businesses. I don't want to destroy your, 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 your life. He said that if you don't hearken to my voice, then be certain that anything that you do in disobedience, you have heard my word and you keep on insisting. He said they will lose their cattle and any man out there that is not in the house to be destroyed. So what do you think God was doing? You may think that God wants to destroy the, the Egyptians. No, he also loves the Egyptians. You don't know, he loves the world. And if you are a sinner, if you are not yet in Christ, you are hearing me, just know that God loves you the way he has loved us, that we have come to him. He doesn't make us to, he doesn't mean that he loves you less. He loves all men and he wants them to come. He loves the children of Israel. He had a covenant with them. Look at him addressing them. Gathered your cattle out of the field. I just want to show you that I am God. We see what is happening in our generation. God is releasing his plagues. He is releasing his judgment. I tell you more are still coming. We have said it clearly that man has been rebellious. Man has continued in his rebellion and we are here proclaiming the counsel of God. God has done all he can do to mankind yet mankind has continued in his iniquity. One place that amazes me in the scripture is in the book of Revelation. You see where God was releasing the spell, uh, uh, the plagues, and the angels will pour out this veil, and there will be plagues, and there will be so many things happening in the world, and then there is something that happened. The Bible said, and the people repented not. 
of their fornications, of their evil, of all the things they are doing against God. That means God is the intention for releasing all these plagues is for them to acknowledge him and for them to repent. And I tell you something, God was telling Pharaoh, I raised you up for such a time as this. And God demonstrated, you know, when it began, it began as if there was a contention between the gods. Because Moses would drop his own rod, and then these uh, magicians would drop their own rod. He would turn the, the sea to be red and full of blood, and then they would also do the same. But when it came to the one of flies, the Bible says that the magician tried to, to cause flies to come, and they could not. And they said, wow, Pharaoh, we must tell you that this one is the finger of God. And that was from hence that time, the Lord continued to show and demonstrate to Pharaoh. And what God was doing, they have not seen God yet. It it was only his his power over nature that he was still displaying. Where did the locusts come from? Where did all those hell come from? I tell you something. God is not intending for anyone to perish. God to see this God and realize that he is the one who wants us to be saved. His intention is for us to recognize that he is God. For you to recognize that he loves you so much. And there is a scripture I always express. As the Lord showed me that scripture, I I, I, I've looked at it and I said, wow, this is how my father is. And do you know what? Before I found it out, even as a pastor, I never really saw God that way. You saw, and that is how God, you know, you look as if uh, God is permitting sinners to continue in their wickedness. No, it is his love. The love he has as a father has a love for his children. Even the one that is going astray, it pains him, yet he loves them and is giving them time. And that is a time that you know that very soon, that time will be no more. Now we saw that in the book of Genesis, it was the, it was the scenario between God himself and Cain. When the Lord showed me that scripture, I was looking at the scripture. I read it over and over. I said, wow. So, Lord, he said, that is how I relate to every single man. That is how God relates with every one of us. He is that one that is talking to you. Imagine how God was speaking to Cain. There was somebody that became a murderer after the Lord told him, sin is after you. It is lying at the door and it is, his desire is with you and you must master it. He wants to have you. He wants to master you, but you must master this sin. That was God talking to Cain. That was God whispering to Cain. That was God telling him, don't fall into this sin. Yet we saw that Cain fell into that sin. As if that one was not enough. We saw how God began to talk with him. Where is Abel, your brother. God knew that he killed him. But you see how God comes to us. You know, some of us think that we can outsmart God. I don't know. It, it, it is ignorance of who God is. It is the ignorance of who God is that makes us live our life the way we live our life. If you understand this God, you will weep for all the years of ignorance and all the years you have lived the way you lived. We are going to trust God to reveal himself to us. Jesus said, oh righteous father, the world have not known thee. That is the truth. We have not really known him. We only discover who he is in Christ Jesus. The Bible said one of the best scriptures I've ever seen there in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said that the Lord, God the Father, was in Christ Jesus reconciling the whole world unto himself. He is no longer counting men's sins unto them. Wow. As in he's not counting men's sins unto them. The fornicator, the adulterer, you are still in sin. And if you die, you are going to hell. Yet God is not counting your sin against you. So why will you go to hell? Because if you don't come to Jesus in your sin, if you die, you go to hell. God is not counting your sin to you. That is why you have to come and understand that Jesus has taken all the guilt of your sin. All you need to do is to acknowledge him as God. All you need to do is to say, Lord, I'll be the sinner. I come back. But there are works of wickedness that are resisting the gospel and that is why when you see us make proclamation as we are going to make it again this morning every day we make proclamations we make declarations we declare the lordship of jesus we destroy the we, we destroy the works of darkness and we pronounce the kingdom of god has come when you understand the nature of this god 
When you understand God and behold him as he really is. No wonder Jesus lived the way he lived. No wonder he will look at sinner, he will have compassion on them. He called out the sheep that are scattered without any shepherd. He said he had compassion on them. No wonder he will have compassion on the sinner, the, the one that is bribed, the one that fornicates. You know, when they call the woman in adultery, look at how Jesus passionately attended to that wounded sheep. That woman was craving for something and she was thinking that it is her desire as she sleeps with men that will give her the relevance she needed. Jesus looked at that woman and said, daughter, your sins are forgiven you. Go and sin no more. And I tell you something, that woman didn't go back to adultery again. She never went back to that again because what? She found her value. The thing that we are trying to feed ourselves with, we are like that man that is a, the madman of Gadara. The Bible says he was tearing himself apart. Most of the times, that's what we do with sin. If you are involving in sin, you are tearing yourself apart. You are involved in masturbation. You are involved in iniquity. Those unclean lifestyle you know is eating you up and you are full, You are indulging in it. You are tearing yourself. You know, my husband went out. He was, he was ministering to somebody. He told me how the lady was talking about his, her trade. What she does is that she goes to nightclubs and she sells uh, the helium balloon and people inhale it to get high. And the consequence, you know, the man was just preaching to her. He said, you know the consequences of what to do? They began to browse it. What does it mean? They googled it and they found out the side effect of inhaling this, this um, helium gas. You know, they, they put it in a, in, a, in a balloon and people will sniff it and they get high. You know what people do when they involve in sin? You know, the side effect, even lying affects your psychology. Even your, the, everything that is sin depreciates life. And God does not want anyone to perish. You know how he tenderly attends to us? No matter what you have done, he said, even if your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And even if they are as red as chrism that means blood may be involved he said he will wash you and make you white he doesn't even though he releases judgment he still doesn't want you to be destroyed imagine what he did he was telling them what he's about to do and yet he told them send therefore and gather your cattle gather everything out of your field and your servant the bible said those that fear the lord and that is where i want to end this morning he said he that feared the word of the lord among the servants of pharaoh made his servant and his cattle to flee into the house and then verse 21 said and he that regarded not the word of the lord left his servant and his cattle you know what happened to them all his servants and all their cattle were destroyed and now we're not talking about cattle and servants talking about your life if you don't regard this word of god if you don't regard this love of God, there's going to be destruction. And this one is internal destruction. The Bible says, for whosoever believeth in him should, not, should be saved. Will not perish. There is a perishing that is not like the perishing of the cattle and the servants. It's an internal perishing. And God doesn't want anyone to perish. Tomorrow we're going to look at that. And I'm trusting the Lord that you will come to God and say, Lord, I don't really understand the details. But what I just heard is that you, you know, you really care. You don't want the destruction to come upon me or my business. Because when the judgment comes, it's for people to acknowledge God as God. And then turn to him. And you will be saved from the hand of of your enemy. Can we pray together? I'm trusting the Lord that he, Majatiri Mazakaba, will reveal himself to you in this way. You will see him as a loving heavenly father. Look at him talking to even a murderer. You may have murdered somebody. Maybe right now you are in the prison. You are hearing us. I don't know where you are hearing us from. Or maybe the guilt of what you have done that nobody knows about is haunting you. You can come to him. Maybe you committed abortion. Maybe you killed. You really literally killed. Maybe you involved in something that blood is involved. They said, even if your sins are like scarlet, they are bloody. God said, I can wash you whiter than snow. I don't know what you may be having involved. The Bible said, all of us have gone astray. Each of us have gone to our own separate ways. The Lord Jesus is ready to welcome you this morning. You have to say, Lord Jesus, teach me who you are. Reveal yourself to me. Lord, I want to know you. Indeed, we don't know the Father. As you pray, oh righteous Father, oh, the world have not known you, but I want to know you. Just talk to your God. He's your heavenly father. He loves to reconcile back to you. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you. Say, come unto me. 
and rest. There is a rest for the people of God. That rest is not for everybody. For those who are not regarding the word of God, eventually the destruction that God is saying, I don't want it to be destroyed as long as they're hacking to my word. For anyone who is not regarding this word of God, destruction is really waiting for them and it is not God's intention because sin must be punished and Jesus has taken that punishment. All you need to do is say, Lord, I fear your word and I hearken. Come as you are. The Bible says, if anybody that will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead, he said you shall be saved. Can we do that together? You are going to acknowledge that God raised Jesus from the dead. You are go going to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. You are going to acknowledge and confess him with your mouth that he is from henceforth your Lord. And what happens? He gives you that grace. Father, I thank you for everyone praying this prayer right now. Everyone acknowledging you as God. Anyone that is seeing you and understanding that in the midst of their sin, they don't want you don't want them to perish. I pray for them right now. I ask, oh God, as you save to the utmost, oh God, let your salvation, oh God, locate them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are reconciling men back to you in the name of Jesus. I want you to see God more. Can you read this place again? Read that, uh, the book of John chapter 17. Read the entire verse, okay? The entire chapter. Read all the verses in that chapter, John 17. You can also read that Exodus chapter 9. We read from verse 19 to 21 today. And we are trusting the Lord to give you understanding. You grow in the Lord. And as you behold God, every grip of darkness shall be broken. So we lift up our voice and address the powers of darkness holding the, holding the mind of the people. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the mind of the people that they will not see the glorious gospel. What is the glorious gospel? The glorious gospel is that God is no longer counting your sins. He knows those weaknesses. You know he can. you cannot help yourself. All those condemnation, the devil is condemning you. Do you know that God is not counting it on, on you? He wants you to return back like the prodigal son. So we declare that every walk of darkness holding people from seeing God as he is, we tear it and we scatter it this morning. In the name of Jesus, we declare the walks of darkness are destroyed. Father, every spell, every covering cast over the people, we declare they are destroyed this day. In the name of Jesus, the people shall behold God as he really is. You go forth into your day and see the amazing miracles the Lord will bring your way. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. It is well with you. Today is blessed. Whatever you do is blessed. The work of your hands are blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh. I'm